<laughs> Good morning, Aubrey. How's it going? Excellent. I'm excited for this episode because I'm going to share a story with Jessica that she's never heard. At the same time, I share it with you guys. So, and it would be a great story for a speaking part two answer. So how about we talk about speaking part two, Jessica? What do you think? <laughs> no. What if I just <laughs> no. said no? Um, <laughs> That's a terrible I, idea. <laughs> I love it when, um, when we're planning episodes, you guys, and sometimes like for this one, I love it when this happens, when like one of us has just a really cool story we want to tell you. And then we like extrapolate an IELTS lesson out of that story. Yes. I, I love these episodes. So first guys, we're going to teach you some vocabulary about saving money um, because spending money, saving money, budgeting, finance, stuff like this comes up all the time on IELTS speaking and writing. So first we'll give you the vocab and then Aubrey, you're going to share a very uh, special part two answer. That's correct. Yeah, this is great. We recently, not recently, it's been a little while now, but we did an episode that you definitely want to check out with some related vocabulary, 826. It was called Avoid Being a Cheapskate with today's Band 9 IELTS vocab. We taught the adjectives frugal, stingy, penny pincher, and cheapskate, which are great nouns. This is such high-level vocab. Today, we're going to teach a couple of idioms and some nouns you could also use. And if you are armed with all of this vocab, anytime money comes up, you're going to be able to get such a higher vocabulary score. Yeah, I that was a long time ago, episode 826, long time ago, but I do remember it because the vocabulary from that episode is so fun, guys. So if you haven't listened, definitely go back and listen to um, IELTS Energy 826. Okay, so let's get into some new vocab. So um, take a shortcut. Um, I feel like it's almost always paired with the verb take right? Mm -hmm. To take a shortcut. So what does that mean, Aubrey, to take a shortcut? Yeah, it's interesting how there are two very different meanings for this idiom. One is a little more literal. Like if you are needing to get around a park, instead of taking the long way on the sidewalk, you could take a shortcut and cut straight across the park, right? Mm -hmm. So we do <clears throat> use it that way. But we also use it to talk about saving money. When if something is cheaper, if it's going to save us either some time or some labor or some money, we'll, we'll say we're going to take a shortcut. Yeah. Um, or anytime you're trying to do something more quickly by mm -hmm. not doing a couple steps. And yes. this can go horribly wrong or it can be fine. <laughs> but I feel like, um, for example, when James is doing math homework or something like he can do a lot of the stuff in his head. And so he takes shortcuts when he's writing out his math problems and he gets in trouble for that because he's skipping steps. Right. So taking a shortcut, we can use that in so many different ways. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, this makes me think of another idiom to cut out the middleman. Oh, yes. And we use this a lot when we're talking about saving money as well. Instead of like, paying somebody for a service and they do the service right for you that's more expensive than just doing it yourself you know what i mean so for example people hire people to like clean their home or organize their closets <laughs> stuff like that so i don't do that i just i cut out that middleman and i do it all myself or diy stuff around the home i try and save money by doing things myself all the time. Absolutely. Um, this is very true for me too. And I don't know about you, Jessica, but often I regret it. Something will happen, something will go wrong yeah. and I'll end up, this is going to come up in my part two answer, guys, stay tuned, but <laughs> I end up regretting it a lot. <laughs> in fact, okay, this is really funny. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, you can see that there's like a closet door behind me because when James had a sleepover, one of the kids broke the closet and so like I removed the doors myself and I hung up curtains to like replace them. But like it, 
oh, it just, it, it didn't quite work. Didn't and work. every time, every time I'm cutting corners at home, like <laughs> something goes wrong. Same. <laughs> so now I just have a closet door behind me for no reason. Yes. Um, and you just anyway. used the third one we were going to talk because these are so very similar, right? You said every time I'm cutting corners, this happens. That's the third one is just cut corners, which means same thing. They're very related. They're really synonymous. It just means to eliminate steps to try to do something quicker, more easily. And yeah, sometimes uh, it goes very wrong. <laughs> 98% <laughs> of the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So the last words we have um, to get a bargain or find a bargain or find a deal. So they mean the same thing. These nouns bargain and deal. It just means that something is a good price. That's all it means. Like you got a good price on something. All right. So let me get out my timer here. And Aubrey is going to answer the part two question, um, describe a time you tried to save money recently. So this could definitely be an IELTS topic, guys, and I can't wait to hear your story. Yes. Um, sure. All right, you can start speaking now. Believe it or not, this just happened to me a couple of weeks ago. For ages, we had been wanting to plant trees in our backyard to hide this grotesque cinder block wall that borders our yard, but they're extremely expensive. Um, to get them from an actual nursery would have been about $400 a tree, so we never did it. But then we finally found them on sale at Costco. It was such a deal, um, and I'm kind of a bargain shopper, so I couldn't resist. They were only 70 bucks. So we decided to cut out the middleman, not get them at the nursery, which would have been easier because they deliver them, they plant them for you. Instead, we got to pick them up at Costco. So it was definitely taking a shortcut, but I figured it would really be worth the cost savings. So I take my car to Costco and I load the trees in my SUV and thinking, okay, everything's fine. Get them home first problem, I realized I had punctured the roof of my car. Oh. So there's a hole in the ceiling, which is going to be crazy expensive to fix, <laughs> or I just deal with the hole in the car. <laughs> Not ideal. Second problem, when I go to plant one of these trees, I accidentally pierced the irrigation line. <gasps> and cut Holy it, and, it's a leak. and so the cost to repair the irrigation and my car is by far more than I saved by getting this deal at Costco, <laughs> buying the trees myself. So the moral of the story is it's uh, not always ideal to cut corners. And definitely in this case, I have so many regrets. I regret putting the trees in my car in the first place. I should have asked someone to borrow a truck or paid if I needed to, to get a truck or a trailer to transport these trees in a more reasonable way. And Thank everyone you. knew this. Thank you. <laughs> guys, I was going to start going into how the guys at Costco were like, really? Really? You're putting these trees in this car? You think that's a good idea? <laughs> oh my gosh. If you are just listening to the audio on the podcast, guys, please go watch this on YouTube. I know you heard me laughing. I was trying so hard not to like respond and laugh, but I couldn't help it. You couldn't help it. I had like both hands covering my mouth, trying to keep the laughter in because this is so funny. I can't believe you put a hole in your room. I know. It's so terrible. I felt terrible. I didn't realize at the time what happened was they were stacked in there and one of them sort of slipped and when that happened it like kind of shoved it to where the top of the tree went straight through the like cloth of the sunroof <gasps> and so, so horrendous. oh my I gosh know. you guys okay worst case I, scenario <laughs> I could talk to you about this story for so long but I'm gonna bring it back to IELTS here guys for our listeners so a couple things that you can um extrapolate I used that word earlier in the episode nice. and I wanted to use it again um extrapolate from Aubrey's answer that you guys could use. I'll just point out a couple. So to begin your answer with believe it or not, that's such a great phrase to introduce a surprising story. Anything surprising that you are sharing, you can introduce it with believe it or not. And you could use this in anywhere on the speaking test, guys. Um, and then the, the other thing I'll point out is that, um, 
<laughs> you said it's not ideal. So when something is really bad, right? You don't have to just say like, oh, this is awful. This is horrible. That's great vocab, but we can insert some really natural communication and sarcasm into our answer mm. by being like, and this was not great. This was not awesome. So I love the intonation and stress you get by inserting that little description into your answer. It adds so much personality for your pronunciation score. Um, and your vocab score, if you use a good adjective, not ideal, not fabulous, you know? So guys, those two things you could definitely use in your speaking part two answers. Oh my gosh, Aubrey, I, I can't know. believe that happened. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then, <sighs> yeah, so we've got, we, we got the sprinkler repaired, but it's not cheap, you know, no. and I haven't even gotten the car repaired yet. I don't, I kind of just want to sell it. <laughs> Just let like it, let someone else deal with it and it's pretend like, it never happened. <laughs> sometimes, especially with cars, that's the best way. Just be like, it'll Seriously. cost more money to fix this than yes. for me to buy a new car. So I'm yes. just going to get rid of it. <laughs> Oof. Okay, guys, definitely listen to Aubrey's answer a couple times today because you used most, if not all, of the vocabulary we taught you in the beginning of the episode. So that was amazing. So definitely listen to that for context for today's vocab. And, and um, it's really a testament to telling a story makes those two minutes fly. I could not yeah. believe it when you said, thank you. I'm like, oh, I can't believe it's been two minutes. Yeah. It flew by so quickly. Totally. Whereas a lot of part two answers when I don't tell a story, I, I'm like, oh, what else do I say? I know. Exactly, makes guys. such a difference. Totally. Um, that's the final takeaway today, guys. Tell a story in part two. We've done a lot of episodes on that. So if you're new to the podcast, um, just look at our feed, search for story. <laughs> it'll Seriously. Come up. <laughs> um, or come back to the website, allearsenglish.com, and you could search for uh, blogs on podcast episodes and YouTube, IELTS Energy TV. You can search there as well. All right. Awesome. Uh, thanks for sharing that vulnerably <gasps> awful story. <laughs> <laughs> I am. We're keeping it real here, right? Keep I do dumb real. things sometimes. <laughs> Hashtag keep it real on IELTS Energy. All right, Aubrey. Uh, okay. Well, we'll see you in the next episode, guys. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye.